So I've got a character on this planet, but it's not behaving the way I want it to. When I walk off the side of this planet, it simply falls off. Now that won't do, I want this planet to have gravity, so how do I go about doing this? It may surprise you, but the actual gravity is just one of the three systems that we need to get this going. The other two are the controls, so in other words the actual systems that pull you towards the planet, and the camera, so that you can actually see your character right side up. So suppose we've got a character on the planet. The first thing we want to do is add a gravity well, so that's a point in the center of mass of the planet that actually emits gravity, so to say. We also need a balance point, so that's a point in the center of mass of our character for which the gravity is computed. So if you plot out the distance to the planet in the whole picture, it sort of looks like this, so it gets stronger as you go further out from the planet. We can sample that for our balance point and get a difference vector. And to that difference vector, we need to apply some falloff model. And the falloff model is basically just a formula to get from distance to like actual strength. In the real world, that would be 1 over distance squared, but in my case, I'm using a formula which I've derived in my last video, which is especially useful for small planets. There's one final component, and that is the bounding shape. So balance points need to know that they are in the vicinity of some planet and that they need to compute gravity for it. So we just set it to a radius where the gravity is almost zero, so that it really doesn't matter if we compute gravity there or not. And there you have it, that's the complete system. Oh, right, this reminds me I haven't actually done anything to show the gravity, but I can feel it, trust me, it's there. We'll just move on to the controls. Controls! Not only are they needed to move your character, but they are also needed to move your character. I've got a pretty simple setup right now. I'm just reading what the inputs are, then figuring out how much control the player has over their character. And then I'm handling jumping, walking, the forces acting on the character, and finally movement itself and the turning. So I think the start should be fairly obvious. So we are adding the down vector times 9.81 each tick, but we don't want to be pulled down like the global down, we want to be pulled towards the planet. And that is information that our balance point holds, so we can just get that from the balance point. And if we don't have any direction, then we are somewhere in space and we just skip everything that comes after. But if we do have a down direction, we can add that to our velocity, and that should already bring us gravity. So the biggest problem I see right now is that I'm not rotating with the planet and with the gravity in particular. And for that I have the turning function, so currently we are just looking at the direction we want to move, but we actually need to slant and tilt the character so that our down points towards the planet center. And for that we have to do some more math, so we can first get the forward and the up direction of our character. And if we want to move in some direction, we want to look in this direction. And if we don't have any inputs from the player, then we just continue looking in the same direction as we currently do. Then we just have to adjust the looking at function to take this new look intention horizontal and the actual up direction rather than the global up. And there's one more thing that we want to do, which is setting the up direction for our character body 3D because that's something that Godot expects for the move and slide function. So that solves that problem. But something you can't really see from your perspective is I'm pressing down here and I'm hardly moving at all. And once I'm over the edge of this planet, suddenly the controls reverse and I'm just sliding along the bottom weirdly. So the controls are kind of messed up right now. And that's something we handle in the process walking function. And this is where you could get stuck, I wouldn't blame you certainly. When staring at code like this, it's hard to really imagine what you have to do, like you have vectors and what do you even input, do you rotate something? But I think everybody has an intuitive understanding of how movement should work, and I can show you that in Super Mario Galaxy. From the top down, it's pretty simple. If you move the joystick left or right, you want to move left or right, and if you move it up or down, you want to move up or down. Let's try a more difficult example. We are now looking sort of from behind Mario, and if we want to move to the left, we still kind of want to move to the left, and if we want to move up, well, it's not exactly up, but it is certainly the same direction, just like projected down onto the floor. And I bet you're already guessing at what's going on. 
It's not going to get much more complicated than that. We just want to use the left and up arrows from the camera direction and sort of project it onto the floor, no matter what direction we are looking from. So what does this mean exactly? Well, we need a function that projects our movement intention from a 2D vector into a 3D using the camera's perspective, the up direction and, well, the movement input. And I know I just talked about projection. Even though projection is sort of a lie, rather than projecting, I'm using the cross product between the up direction and the camera's X and Y, which more or less results in the same, but it's just faster to compute. But before we use that as the final velocity vector, I want you to consider something, and that is that in the real world you don't have perfect control over your velocity. Imagine you're standing on top of a mountain and there's a strong wind blowing at you. Rather than moving perfectly in the direction that you want, you can sort of control how much you're moving in that direction and you're limited by how the wind is blowing you. If you want to move in the same direction as the wind, you're free to move very fast. But if you want to move in the opposite direction, you can move slow at best. Maybe you can't move in that direction at all. You can sort of lean against it, but you're still blown the other direction if the wind is really strong. So rather than treating the output of this function as the final vector for movement, we treat it as sort of the direction that the player wants to move and then move towards it in the walking function. And that solves pretty much all our walking woes. The only thing that's left now is jumping. When I'm on the side of the planet, I can't really jump at all. And that's a pretty easy fix, so rather than setting the y of the velocity to the jump strength, we'll figure out the direction we actually jump using the up direction, and then subtract the component of our current velocity that is currently pointing towards up, which is more or less setting velocity.y to zero, which we did earlier. Congratulations! That's all you need to know, that's all the movement algorithm that we'll need to go through. We do have another bit of a problem though, which is the camera. If I move to the bottom of the planet, while I can move, the camera is sort of janking out. And I think this should be a pretty simple fix. I just sort of need to set the camera's perspective depending on what side of the planet I'm on. But I think we all deserve a break, so I'll take a bit of a nap and I'll wake you when I figure out a solution. <laughs> It is the next day and I declare, I cannot solve the problem because the rotation is a coconut. And no, I haven't gone mad over the night, let me explain. So the rotation of the camera has three degrees of freedom, you can represent it with your pitch and roll. But if you were to take any of these just by themselves, they are rotating variable, like in modulo space. So to say the yaw goes from 0 degrees to 360 degrees and then it comes back around. It is an angle. And an angle is something you can put in a vector field. So if all the vectors had normalized length, you would just need the angle to represent the entire vector field, which you could put on a sphere. And suddenly, well, you have a vector field on a sphere. So the unfortunate thing about this is there's a theorem called the Harry Ball theorem. And in one form, it basically states, you cannot comb the hairs of a coconut without creating a cowlick. And in practice, that means there's always a singularity somewhere. At some point, if you move over this point, the camera will jank out and just reverse direction suddenly. So there's no way to turn the camera in a predetermined position based on the location on the planet. Which sounds pretty grim. So there's no way to solve a problem? Well, think again. Obviously there is. I mean, you've played Super Mario Galaxy, I, I presume. So what we want to do is actually quite simple. Instead of predetermining the position, we will just rotate dynamically based on the character. So let's explore our options here. In the simplest case, we could just have the camera follow the player. So you can see this in 2D. If I move clockwise around the planet, the camera will just follow me. If I move counterclockwise, then the camera will follow me in that direction. So that looks pretty good. There's just one issue with that, and that is if I stand below the camera, it will just point straight downward. Indeed, in Super Mario 64, you can see this problem even occur in a finalized game. So if you do move under the camera, it will point 
straight down and you won't see anything of the environment anymore. And yes, like I said, there's ways to solve this, but we will not get into those because that's not the kind of camera perspective that I actually want. And I can show you that on a 2D plane, so let me just switch into free remote for the mouse. That's command shift and the any key. You can see that no matter where I move, the camera always ends up like directly behind me after some time. And I don't really want that. I want a more strategic view. I want to be able to move freely at least a little bit and the perspective not to shift too much. I want the player to have control of the perspective and the camera not to change angles. And well, the way to solve that is actually pretty simple. So all I need to do is figure out the angle differences between the player and the last position of the player and adjust the camera's angle accordingly. So this is reversible and no matter where I move around the planet, it will follow me around in the same strategic view that we've set up for ourselves previously. So I think that's a perfect solution for, well, at least my problem. And whoa, actually, let's step back for a second. I think this is almost perfect. This represents pretty much all that I want to do on the spherical planets. It's, uh, yeah, surprisingly, that was actually pretty easy. There's one more thing, though, which I pretty much can't get out of my head, and that is that maybe in the future I want to have more complicated planets. So maybe I want a pill shape planet or I want some kind of loop-de-loop -loop, or I don't know, maybe switching from side to side or some kind of ring gravity. And the way to achieve that is actually pretty simple. So we can use the same kind of mechanisms that we used before. The actual real difference is the difference function, that is the distance function but represented as a vector. So if I have a pill shape planet, all I need to do is use the difference function for pill shapes. Or maybe if I want to have some kind of ring structure, then all I need to do is take the difference method for the ring. I'm not going to go too much into detail on how I achieve this. I'll just pretend I thought of this as some kind of reader exercise, but you can find the source code on my GitHub and yeah, check it out for yourself. Maybe that is something you want to do for yourself as well. So I'll leave you with some footage for a pretty crappy demo world I put together, but it does show you all the different kinds of gravity you can achieve with this system. And yeah, this has been all. I honestly really dragged this video out far too long, I don't know why, but I have some really exciting stuff planned for next time and that is I want to explore atmospheric lighting with you. I know there's been some videos about this before, but I think I have a pretty unique perspective on it. So look forward to that. My name has been Ivorius and I will see you next time. <laughs>